Last week there was some, some hands-on labs and some, some of the folks on the WebEx were able to actually um, administer some NetApp storage arrays. And um, I believe, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I wasn't a part of it, but some of the administration functions, or I believe the bulk of the administration functions were done in one or two interfaces. They were done either via a command line interface or um, a web-based uh, interface that's referred to as Filer View, which is an embedded web management interface. Um, on each, uh, it's embedded on each storage controller. So um, uh, while those interfaces are, are viable and customers use those um, daily, they tend to be our legacy management tool set and infrastructure. And so today what I figured is a great place to start would be to show you um, one of the tools that the majority of our um, mid-size customer base is using. Um, this is called NetApp Systems Manager. And so I've, I've, I've launched it as a Win32 um, app. Um, and as you can see here, it's a much different interface than, than the command line or file view. Um, on the left-hand pane, it would provide me a list of storage controllers. Um, I apologize for this demo. I don't have this list populated with dozens of controllers. I simply have a single storage controller. But as you can see here, um, I continue to expand on the view of this storage controller, and it, it allows me to have an, an overview in terms of what's going on in the, the system, um, listing some system um, details, uh, giving me some different performance, both graphs and um, counters. It allows me also to be notified if there's any issues with the storage controller itself. I'm able to expand on the storage section um, of Systems Manager, and you can see now that I have sub-objects, which are storage storage objects, uh, be it volumes, LUNs, uh, shared shared folders, uh, be it Windows or, or, or Unix sharing, uh, and then some some uh, additional components uh, called Q trees, which are uh, basically quota parameters on a NetApp system and aggregates. So I'd like to to, to dig into this a little bit and um, show you how how we actually provision some of the storage vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, maybe what was on display last week. And so I think that the first place to start is um, with a construct that is unique to NetApp, which is referred to as an aggregate. An aggregate um, on a storage controller that's powered by data on tap is a collection of physical disk drives, and we pool them together and we protect them with um, RAID, uh, a NetApp system uh, leverages a technology called RAID DP. Uh, it is a proprietary form of RAID. Um, it basically, uh, from a definition standpoint, follows a RAID 6 definition, which is you can lose two drives simultaneously without losing a data set. Um, however, it does not suffer from uh, the performance penalties associated with uh, a traditional standardized RAID 6 um, technology. Uh, we also offer RAID 4, and as you can see here on the screen, um, we have two different aggregates, uh, one of 23 disks, which is where we would put our data that's configured with RAID DP. Uh, that's called aggregate 1. Aggregate 0 is a two-disk um, uh, volume, I'm sorry, two-disk aggregate, which is actually containing our, our system information, um, controller log files, things of that nature as well. And we've just protected that with a RAID 4 form of data protection. So from that construct, once we have an aggregate, what we're actually creating is resource pools, pools of um, storage capacity and storage performance, because those are um, the two metrics that you uh, receive with each, with, with each disk drive. From an aggregate level, we're able to actually provision um, volumes. And on a NetApp system, those volumes are referred to as a flexible volume. A flexible volume allows you to dynamically resize the storage object at any given time. It also allows you to draw from the pool of um, capacity and IOPS that are available from the physical disks that are underneath the, the flexible volume. So as you can see here, I've highlighted um, a volume that's called NetApp 1. Um, I get some statistics from this volume here. I can actually look at the, the volume in a graphical view where I can see the total capacity and the used capacity. Um, here, I'm also able to do things like click on the volume, and I can edit properties of the volume, uh, whether it's names, whether I want to make it thin provisioned, uh, enable data deduplication, um, set the volume to dynamically resize itself. 
um, many many storage customers provision storage, and then you're kind of locked into the provision provision settings that you have, hoping that you fill them up. Um, well, you know, one alternative to that is to over provision or, or thin provision and oversubscribe, I should say. Uh, another is to let your storage management just um, auto grow uh, as needed. So, uh, and then some other additional. Um, uh, options that, that are usually um, one-off or, or spe specific case use configuration options. Uh, another feature here, and then we'll demonstrate this here within um, the volume, is we actually have the ability to launch a wizard to allow us to resize, and we can both grow and shrink this volume. So as you see, uh, currently it's a 24 gigabyte volume that has about 6 gigs of capacity used in it. I can very easily um, move it up to whatever size I want. Um, in this example, I'm going to increase its size to 300 gigabytes. Um, and, it's, and that change takes effect immediately. I also can, can resize it back down to um, uh, whatever size I want. And the, the system will prevent you from um, provisioning stores less than the capacity that you um, are currently consumed within that volume. So there's, there are safety valves there to not let you uh, lose your data. Okay. And then once we have the construct of um, our volume, that is the level that we do our replication, uh, our snapshots, et cetera. And so you can see here we can report on a per volume basis um, snapshots for, for systems. And so clicking on some systems here, you can see that we have some of our snapshots that are associated with, with the, this volume titled SRM1. We can also look at technologies like data deduplication statistics. Um, Probably should have grabbed the volume that had ddupe running. We'll get to ddupe uh, specifically instead of VMware versus having me guess which volume is deduplicated. Um, so from from that standpoint, the last the last point I'm going to stand on the storage provisioning is once you have a volume, that is the construct for uh, LUNs. So a, a NetApp LUN is a basically a virtual object. Um, the NetApp storage array really is an object-oriented storage array, so we are able to uh, provision LUNs and LUNs actually sit inside of virtual machines. And so, um, as you can see here, I can create a, a LUN and have a wizard to do so, but um, this is a very storage-centric view of provisioning where, you know, we can, we're going to create our object, we're going to need to associate it back to hosts and mask it. And while we can do this, um, I thought it would be more interesting from a standpoint of actually showing how the majority of our um, customers are moving in terms of a model that's unique, which is actually provisioning storage to hosts from within the host or, or provisioning storage within inside of uh, vSphere, inside of vCenter itself. And so um, unless someone objects, I'm going to skip on this property. And we'll come back to the manager to validate any of the, the configurations and, and settings that we make because uh, it, it's a good kind of check and balance tool. Um, in addition to that, this tool allows us to set up um, the rest of the hardware um, in the array itself, whether it's, whether it's um, communication or network interface ports, uh, whether it's storage protocols enabling them, et cetera, uh, whether it's um, secure access and things of that nature. Um, so this tool is, is a pretty easy means to manage multiple systems. Now, I did, I did say early on, and I'm going to move out of system manager, but I did mention earlier on that we do have a, a, a tool that layers, uh, or I'm sorry, manages at an even higher level than systems manager, which is called operations manager. Operations manager is a, a web-based global management suite that uh, ties into a number of our enterprise class monitoring and, and management products, uh, tools that integrate with in our data protection scheme and our storage provisioning schemes as well. Uh, for sake of, of this demo, um, demonstrating systems manager, if this demo is well received, maybe we'll consider demonstrating those tools at a, at a later date.